have a chat window open. So let me just see if the chat is active. Yeah, Pranav says yes. So type in yes uh, if I'm audible. People are joining in, so we'll just wait for five more minutes. 7.30 is our start time. Uh, I think we are bang on. So Prabhu joined, Vinay joined, uh, Safir joined, Dhairashil is there. All right. Okay, everyone, uh, can you hear me? Just type in yes if I am audible. And then I will just uh, mute my uh, microphone and then we can start after five minutes. All right. Okay. So we'll wait for five more minutes. Uh, let people join in. Till that time, uh, can you just check if you are ready with pen and paper for a lot of notes to be carried over with and uh, make sure you are attentive, make sure you are having a headset, make sure you are having a, a laptop instead of a mobile phone. Okay, good. Natarajan joined, Faizan joined, Sachit joined, Prasanna joined. Okay, so people are joining in. All right, good. Okay. There are some 12 people. Good. I will just try and share my screen uh, for checking purpose. And uh, I will be sharing my screen. I, first of all, I'll introduce myself. And then, of course, I'll be sharing my screen. So I think I'll include sound. And I think I'll include uh, this window. OK. OK, is my screen visible? Yeah, visible, right? Wow, 19 people joined in. Uh, that's good. OK, good, nice, perfect. All right, just two more minutes. I'm receiving some emails that uh, people are joining in within maybe a couple of minutes. So let's just wait for them. Okay, Vinay says visible, Sachit says uh, visible, Dairyashil says visible, uh, Gouda says visible, Abhishek says visible. That's good. Okay, it's nice. So let's go forward with. Uh, I'll just stop sharing because I don't want to share it right now. Uh, I'll share it uh, whenever there is a need of uh, sharing. 
All right. So I'll just try and check whether I can create a poll uh, inside the. Inside the chat or not? I'm not sure. I think I'm not able to create a poll, but that's okay. Wow, 24 people joined in. So uh, I tried to remind all of you uh, by by sending some manual and some automated emails. Uh, just to give you a sense of importance uh, and also to uh, also to tell you that we are we are going to wait uh, we will be there okay so i think there is no poll option as such uh, so let's start guys i think there are uh, 27 people joined in and i'm recording this meeting for sure uh, because this is going to be for future references and uh, uh, for any of my particular feedbacks if it is required. I will not be sharing this recording immediately, but at least after some time, uh, I will I will for sure share the recording. OK, so good to go. Type in ready if you guys are ready. I can see the chat, so type in ready if you guys are ready and uh, we will begin. Shreya says ready, Rajas says ready. Wow. OK. Safi says ready, Abhishek says ready, Ayush says go on. Yes, for sure. Thanks a lot. Okay, so there are one person new activity. Uh, I'm not sure what is happening. Okay, Rahul, uh, Rahul raised a hand. Uh, you can lower your hand, no issues. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for the feedback. So let's begin a discussion with uh, who am I and uh, what I do and what is exactly this uh, webinar is going to be about. Okay, so I'm Nachiket Phadke from Pune. I started my career as a graduate engineering trainee back in 2005, uh, fresh college pass out. I joined Tata Johnson Control as GET and uh, that was my first job. And then uh, I worked there for eight, nine years almost. As I switched to one of the other company called uh, Shape Corporation. And within one year, I started my own business, which is about uh, mechanical engineering training on LS Dyna and Hypermesh. So this is, we, we just completed 10 years in business. So 15th of May, we started uh, back in 2014. And uh, this is 2024, so we completed uh, 10 successful years in business for our training division. Of course, uh, there are uh, uh, there are other businesses in the group, uh, which is typically the engineering solutions or services business, which we have. We do have office in US and we work with defense, railways, automotive and uh, general engineering domain. So that's uh, uh, typically our uh, work portfolio. But we uh, uh, but we don't limit ourselves to those portfolios. We try and explore what else can be done using simulations so that the industry as well as uh, academia both gets benefited. I am empaneled on uh, various board of studies uh, on VIIIT as well as in uh, Rajendra Mane College in uh, Kokan region on purpose because uh, uh, we have to get connected with the rural area. And I'm uh, connected with uh, uh, IIT Delhi for some of the MOUs and other bit. So that's that's about me. This is my 20th year, so 2-0 working in LS Dyna. So from day one, I was working in LS Dyna. Uh, there were two CPU machines or single CPU which we used to fight along. Now uh, it's very easy for us to get a 32 core machine on a desktop or even a 64 core machine on a desktop. So uh, we have moved a long way with regards to hardware. The software typically remains pretty much the same. Uh, of course, there are a lot of improvements, but coming to the today's topic, which is very important. And I feel that every single person who is actually looking after either entering into CAE career or already into the CAE career, 
must understand what is multiphysics simulation must actually look into multiphysics simulation as the way forward okay so that's the entire discussion which is going to revolve around of course i will take you through some of the basic concepts of uh, cae as well as ls dyna and then i will move you to uh, the concept of multiphysics and applications of multiphysics so it's not going to be boring it's going to be super exciting uh, journey for sure so uh, this is all about me as well as what is it that we are going to discuss now i'm going to ask you uh, one single question how many of you are already working in ca just type in yes if you are already working in ca okay if you are already working in ca domain just type in yes okay bablu is already in ca mohan raj is in ca uh then we have rahul who is in ca pranav in ca prithviraj varun ashrinu all are there in ca okay perfect uh, manish is also there in ca nice okay so there is a, a good amount of people who are already working in ca that's a good thing now tell me how many uh, of you apart from these guys are uh, searching for job they are looking for some kind of a skill upgradation or they are freshers so type in yes if you are a fresher now so after santosh who ever types i will consider that guy as a fresher fresher or searching for job may not be fresher ideally but maybe if you are searching for job just let me know okay good nobody is there nobody searching for job okay how many of you are working in cad right now okay ameya says he is searching for job rahul says he is searching for job prasanna says he is searching for job good uh suparsho says and uh, faiz ahmed says okay good planning to change pablo all right all right uh, now tell me uh, type in just type in if you are working in cad so type in cad if you are working in cad cad how many of you are uh, working in cad domain okay dhairyashil says he is working in cad domain okay so i think uh, there are very few people who are working in cad domain so that's nice and another uh, question is or maybe you can write an open answer uh, if anything else you are doing so you are doing research you are in uh, studies or you are actually Uh, a teaching staff that also you can let me know in the chat i just want to get an idea uh, what kind of audience i have because i clearly don't know i never asked this question uh, so i just want to understand what kind of audience it is so you guys can simply uh, tell me what you are doing if it is not getting covered in ca or cad or fresher i think most of you have answered but i'll just ask uh, some of the people jignesh have you answered uh, natrajan nikita third year student amaya says okay fine good that's nice currently work is a uh, trailer air suspension and lift spring yeah perfect okay good that's okay you are already a ca and so those who have answered that's fine those who are apart from ca analyst those who haven't answered can just answer it currently working in design department okay okay some amount of uh, cad rajas says okay so rajas uh, you still there in japan or you came back anyway he will uh, he will answer at his own time all right okay so let me start sharing screen guys and uh, we will uh, yeah good yes i see your a lot of your photos so that's nice okay so i'll just uh, share my screen and uh, we will start discussing uh, the topic is multiphysics simulation okay now to know that you guys are ready type in pp if you are ready with pen and paper quick in chat box type in pp
let me see how many of you are ready with pen and paper okay lot of uh, notes you may have to take uh, some definitions if i say you will have to uh, note down those uh, definitions okay thank you very much guys for the reply that just keeps this chat alive because otherwise it becomes a one way communication okay now um, as the topic suggest it is multi physics simulation a way forward with ls dyna of course we will come to the point where ls dyna is going to get discussed but first of all we will try and discuss uh, these important points okay so uh, what is exactly engineering that's what uh, we are going to discuss of course it may be very late for some of you what is a model and a prototype uh, we will try and understand definition of a model definition of a prototype we will try and understand why do we need cae okay because uh, the multi physics simulation is nothing but part of cae okay then we will also talk about what is the concept of sub subject matter technical expert okay smt so those who are, are not aware smt is nothing but subject matter technical expert okay you can write it down if required what is an organizational structure because most of the engineers are right now unaware of how, how our organization works okay most of you are uh, completely uh, focusing yourself to enter into an r&d department but you really don't know what is r&d you really don't know where the r&d stands for so we will try and discuss about what is exactly the organizational structure and where ca engineers can work Okay, so what are the various departments where a CA engineer can work? Okay, uh, we will talk about multi physics examples in between. So there are so many examples available, and those examples we will discuss because that will give you a good idea about what is exactly happening. Uh, what are the three important steps in CA? Okay, so a uh, preprocessor, solver, postprocessor, and the importance of it a small bit. Most of you are working in CA, so. not much of an explanation needed uh, we will not discuss about dynamic loading in detail but just a definition if required and of course ls dyna is a gold standard in crash worthiness who should learn cae and what is the career path and we will talk about open uh, we will talk about your questions okay so we will have your questions and before the questions uh, question session begins i have some offers because this is going to be a training program which i am going to offer for sure so there is no hiding behind it we are a training institute so we are going to offer something at the end of the uh, end of this uh, webinar but uh, the difference is we are first going to understand whether you are compatible or you yourself are going to understand whether you are compatible with this kind of a domain or not and then we will have the offers as well as the overall content and other bit and uh, of course the offers are uh, limited with regards to time all right so this is what we are going to discuss sounds good shall we begin so type in begin and we will go to our first slide what is engineering okay so this simple image actually explains or the set of image i'll call it what is exactly engineering okay so the first important part here is we will always have a research component and we will always have an end product okay with us and this is going to drive the engineering calculations or recommendations or even the design okay so essentially we are not researchers we may be end users but right now if i want to just check or define what is engineering we are going to take clues from the research and we will make sure a sustainable and working end user product is being built either in a mass scale or in a batch scale or in a one off order so very simple definition between mass scale which is more than 10000 pieces it if it is a batch scale it is going to be some kind of a customization which is available if it is one off it's like building a aircraft carrier or building a uh, something which is a building okay or a bridge so it is a one off structure so what is an engineering uh, field actually doing engineering field is actually going to make you completely aware about what is happening in research 
and applying that research in what in a constrained manner so there are going to be constraints for engineers cost constraint is going to be there time constraint is going to be there and of course there will be performance constraint so when i say constraint i mean that in earlier days the mobile phones were built in such a way that they used to live for very long time later it came to uh, effect that we want to make phones thinner the uh, screen needs to be bigger so the batteries went on uh, to a very small portion of it and the battery replacement came up and uh, the mobile phone life is typically 2 to 3 years or 4 years with a heavy use so this is going to be the performance part of it okay so what is engineering engineering is a bridge between research and end product but at the same time you are not a researcher that's what you need to always understand because for research there is no constraint for research there is no constraint for time or cost you will just keep on pouring the cost if it is required whereas engineering project always goes with a budget and with a timeline is that making sense guys type in ms if this is making sense okay this is very basic we'll just start it off and then we will move forward with our uh, further discussions but just type in ms if this is making sense make sense okay can you draw this image please you can you can simply draw this image and maybe a block diagram you don't have to sketch anything and then we can move forward so 10 seconds give you 10 more seconds and uh, we will move forward with the next important aspect in engineering okay and keep your pen down fine so let's move on to the next slide where we will try and understand what is this statement means a simple statement but a very powerful one which nobody should forget okay an end user always drives an engineer okay engineer is never driven by research engineer will be never driven by just a problem statement it will be always driven by an end user okay there is a need of let's say a uh, very expensive cars right there is a need of very expensive cars because people who are uh, earning uh, a huge sum of money billionaires millionaires maybe they want to uh, distinguish themselves with something which is either watches or cars or something which is extremely complicated to build okay and that's where the end user concept comes in so not just at the top even at the bottom so uh, there are cases where you are supposed to build something which is with very frugal uh engineering and uh, with the understanding of that there will not be too much of a cost associated with buying so the end user is actually going to drive the engineer what is exactly the end user needs that needs to be understood in a clear way by the engineer okay now let's move on to model and a prototype and we will try and understand so i have given this definition now i want an answer okay so you have an image in front of you those who think left hand side is a prototype okay those who think left hand side is a prototype okay type uh, raise your hand maybe it's very simple those who think left hand side is a prototype raise your hands so there is a raise hand command don't raise in front of screen i may not be able to see it those who think left hand side is a prototype raise your hands okay so two people i can see uh then how many are there oh wow okay rahul rahul santosh aishwarya uh vivek good sachet pranav uh, ayush nice okay so there are some Six, seven people, or eight, nine, nine people who raised hands. Uh, those who think, okay, listen to me carefully. 
those who think there is a react button in front of you those who think right side is a prototype okay right side is a prototype those can react with a smiley face or there is a thumbs up anything from the emojis the react post not the raise hand those who think wow so dhairyashil uh, natrajan say that uh, right side is a prototype so i am asking only one question what is a prototype is it a left one or a right one so i can see uh, many people saying that left one is a prototype and there are equal number of people who say that right one is a prototype okay so let's go to the definition guys and let's try to figure out what is a prototype okay now let's define what is model you can write it down model is scalable it may or may not work what is definition of a model model is scalable so you can scale a model and model may or may not work all right so it may work it may not work it may be scalable you can make it one as to one or you can make it a smaller version or you can make it a larger version that is possible with model what is a prototype if you have understood definition of a model prototype is one as to one working model that means it is scalable but you are not supposed to scale it that means it must be one as to one and what is exactly happening with proto it must work that's why if you actually see these two images the left side is on track it is one as to one somebody is behind the wheels driving slow fast applying brakes engines there electric power train is there whatever what not everything is there brakes are there whereas on the right side it may be just a clay model you are looking at it there is a glass there is a tire there is you cannot say that there is an engine or you 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 really don't know what is it inside it is it a scale model is it uh, just a mock up or is it a real car but we can simply spot by looking at the mirror how the mirrors look okay so they are this is essentially a model it is one as to one but it may or may not work is it making sense guys what is model what is prototype can you take this down i'll give you 10 seconds what is model and prototype just type in ready when you are done writing okay i'll keep this screen on just type in ready when you are ready after you write it down what is model what is prototype and type a, uh, or maybe you can write an example of a model in a auto expo or any auto exhibition prototype which is on a race track so you will never forget it so the examples you will always remain or uh, you will always remember type in ready when you are done writing wow good 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 bablu says ready rajesh says ready what is model what is prototype so we understood what is engineering now we understood what is model and a prototype so those who are working in cad what are they building they are building 3d models and now when we move on to what are the ca engineers building the ca engineers are building virtual prototypes they are one as to one they work if it is bolting it is bolting if it is welding it is welding if it is a revolute joint it is a revolute joint if there is a material which is steel it will be steel maybe hsla maybe uh, dp whatever dual phase material you have it is all going to be working it is all going to be one as to one make sense guys clear everyone ready i can see very few replies i cannot move forward without uh, i can see some Uh, at least 20 25 odd employees because i can see many people in the meeting but there are not many replies here so you will have to write it down otherwise i really cannot figure out whether you have understood what i am actually telling you or not 
Okay, Terry Shield says ready. Nice. Okay, so you can lower your hands, those who have uh, clicked on the raise hand commands. And uh, yeah, so Amiya, okay, good. Amiya says ready. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you very much, guys, for the reply. I, as I said, it's kind of a one way communication for me right now, but uh, this will be easy for uh, everyone to have a feedback in a quick manner. Now, Let's try and understand a simple question. Why do we need CAE? Those who are working in CAE, uh, I'll give you some time, maybe 30 seconds. Write it down. Why do you think you need CAE? Let me see. How many of you, those who are working in CAE or even not working in CAE? Let me actually see uh, how many of you are answering. Why CAE? It's a simple question. Let's see. Why? To reduce cost. To reduce cost of physical uh, testing, Varun says. Sai says to reduce cost. Uh, Ayush says making prototype and testing is costly. CA is feasible and economical option. Good. Uh, BMP says minimize the experiment and cost involved. Amazing. Verify virtual simulation uh, of testing. Okay. Uh, verify virtual simulation of testing. That's why we need CAE. Okay. A uh, little bit explanation Vinay I will give you. Reduce time and cost. Okay. To save cost of actual prototyping. Reduce the product development time. That's a good way of looking at it. And uh, reducing time and cost uh, Gauda says. Uh, Rahul says to reduce physical test and faster product in market. That's correct. So that essentially what uh, Manish is also saying that reduce the or Abhishek is saying reduce the product development time altogether. And then we have uh, Om who is uh, saying that reduce time as well as cost of prototype. Okay, that's another way of looking at it. Uh, and to check high stress region and optimize the product Pranav says. So that's also a good uh, way of looking at it. Uh, different test cases on same prototype. Okay, extremely uh, valuable point you have made, Ullas, because you don't have to build another prototype like in a physical world. Okay, that's what Ullas is saying. A very good, very potent point there. CA is to test, predict, and improve the robustness, uh, efficiency, and durability of component and assemblies. Okay, good. That's nice, uh, Shreya. Then uh, to reduce the manpower cost of uh, cost for safety purpose. Okay, fine. Uh, to do trial, Mayur says to do trial and error to get optimized product in a cheaper way. All right. So that means essentially uh, having more number of virtual prototypes without actually incurring any cost on the physical prototype. So guys, I'm impressed. Uh, it's really phenomenal that you guys are uh, giving answers which are pinpointed especially Ullas because this point typically gets missed out. So we uh, always say that we are doing CAE, but if somebody asks us to change a thickness, what is it that we do with shell element? We just change the thickness and start the calculation. Correct. So Sai says uh, different variants can be uh, uh, tested at once. Okay. Amazing, amazing. So this chat, uh, I can just compile and send it to you as email. Uh, would you like that? Why CAE? Answers of uh, all the engineers. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll uh, ask someone to compile and uh, send it to you. Pranay says a time for conversion of physical testing uh, environments to virtual environments. Okay, conversion of physical testing environments to virtual environments. That's absolutely right. And that's where not just one type of physics, the multi physics is going to come into picture now. So we will. We are going to move on to that. But uh, I'm extremely happy, as I said, you guys are bang on. It's perfect answers you, which I got. And the combination of all answers, it's not just reducing time and cost. How you reduce the time and cost and how exactly it affects on the product development cycle. These are the essential things uh, when anybody is going to ask you why you are actually using CAE. Okay. So uh, thanks a lot for answers. Uh, and I'll for sure I'll compile these answers and send it to you. It's getting recorded anyway, so not an issue. Now, uh, 
CAE is essentially a part of an environment which is called as digital twin. Okay, uh, it is one of one one kind of a digital twin. To be very frank, there are digital twins of processes. There are digital twins of living things. There are digital twins of places. Like let's say I want to build an autonomous car, and the autonomous car should be driving just uh, in the city area of Pune. So the map of that city in a 3D view or maybe in a satellitic uh, directions and what are the obstructions? What is the one way? Where are the uh, two way roads? Uh, typically, you can find out. So a place can also be a uh, also be converted in a digital environment. That's also possible using digital twin. So you can have a digital twin of a place. You can have a digital twin of a process. You can have digital twin of a product. and you can have a digital twin of a living thing so right now just ignore this process and maybe places when it comes to cae we have digital twin of a living thing which is nothing but the dummy or the crash test dummy and we do have a digital twin of a product so it can be a seat it can be a railway coach it can be an an aircraft it can be a bullet uh, pay, bullet uh, resisting jacket it can be a blast mitigated uh, seat or a hull or it can be a full car so it doesn't matter so the product is going to be made as a digital twin or a living thing can also be made as a digital twin okay so you can actually see this uh, what is this this is actually the physical a uh, product which you see these two guys are uh, sitting calm and quiet inside uh, inside the vehicle this is kind of an early example of uh, a dummy crash test dummy maybe and then you have this kind of a, so these two are physical products and a digital twin is nothing but uh, a cae model okay a digital model uh, which you can easily open on a computer in a 2d screen but you can vis visual it as a 3d product so that is what is digital twin so we covered why we need cae i am going to as i said i am going to compile everything now this is an important chart here okay up to this point is it clear type in clear if this is uh this is clear yes we were crazed a good point uh, that's a good point uh, unless and until there is a good correlation yes so i'll come to correlation in uh, multi physics uh, absolutely right i've been clear if this up to this point everything is clear okay varun says clear natrajan says clear heman says clear shreya rahul thanks a lot thanks guys for the feedback so okay suparsha says clear sai says clear okay good so up to this point it is clear now let's try and understand the product development process itself which is this simple chart okay i don't want to make it very complicated it's a very simple chart where you have concept so let's say a concept is uh you must have seen one very uh, new kind of a concept where an l5 kind of a vehicle l5 is nothing but a three wheeler l3 l5 are three wheeler categories an l5 kind of a vehicle which looks like a car it's not very old concept it is already there so an l5 kind of a vehicle which looks like a car it has two wheels at the uh, at the back but they are so closely placed that they can be called as a single axle and it can be treated as a single wheel and you have two front wheels and that that is being developed in pune uh, by a company called way mobility v a y e or something and those guys are testing it on uh, various private roads right now it's not allowed to go on a public road anyway but they are testing it in on private roads and it looks like a car but it's not a car so what is happening the concept is to save cost because there is no crash testing for l5 kind of a vehicle you don't have a crash testing for three wheelers so the concept is to save cost and uh, you give similar kind of a uh, experience as that of a car the engineering goes into it like i said it has a single axle at the at the back wheels and uh, that makes it easy for certification as a l5 kind of a vehicle so what is going to happen there will be a 3d cad the concept will be there engineering 
will be divided as 3D CAD model or the actual CAD model, extremely important. Then you have a CAE, which is going to have all sorts of fatigue durability test, crash test if, is, if it is required, static test if it is required, uh, NVH if it is required, all these things are going to come under CAE. And there will be continuous to and fro kind of an information between CAD and CAE. So when I say CAD, I'm not just talking about someone who is just building the models. Okay, somebody who is from the concept department, but he knows how the engineering works. All these guys are going to talk to the CAE guys, whether it is performing well, whether it is not performing well, how can we do it? Is it over designed? Can we reduce the thickness? All these things are being talked about. And when the CAE models are ready, ready in the sense, they are performing well, and you are expecting the expect or you are meeting the expectations, then the prototype build is going to start. And then further, as most of you rightly said, the number of physical prototypes are supposed to get reduced using CAE. So there will be possibly just one physical prototype for a for a particular kind of a testing. So it cannot be same for, you cannot use the same prototype which is being crashed again. That's not possible. But that is something which is for the car crash. If you come down to mobile phones, you may use that kind of uh, the same mobile phone for multiple cases if they are not invasive. So essentially concept and engineering and in engineering, there will be CAD, CA and Proto. These departments are going to talk to each other to make sure the product is actually safe and secure. Okay, can you take this down? A simple product development cycle. I don't want, I never wanted to make it complicated. So simple product development cycle and write down done if you are done writing. A simple product development cycle, you can just type in done once you are done writing. Okay. Gowda says done, Rahul says done. Okay, clear, done. Iman says done, Natarajan says done. Okay, good, nice, nice, nice. Type in done if you have done writing. Santosh, Bablu, Varun, all said done. Viraj, Prithviraj. Those who are traveling can also talk or type. Faiz Ahmed, okay, thanks a lot. Jignesh says done. Abhishek, okay, all right, good. So five more seconds, maybe. Take down this diagram where concept engineering and CAD CA is being explained because guys the next slide is something which is extremely important for you as an engineer to understand where you stand okay where you stand okay so the next slide is about are you a product engineer or are you an application engineer? Okay, this is the concept of subject matter technical expert. So let's say I am a working professional. I am working in the same domain for, let's say I am just starting my engineering career as graduate engineering trainee. And what should be my aim as a technical person? The aim should be subject matter technical expert. You may go into uh, some managerial role, but at the beginning, you really don't know whether you are going to go in a managerial role or not. So the best aim you can keep is become a subject matter technical expert for what? For let's say seat or for full vehicle or for compressors or for uh, let's say uh, defense equipment or for railway coaches. What is it that I'm writing down guys? They are all physical products. What is the biggest mistake people are doing right now? They are not focusing on physical products and they are focusing on 
software tools the tools will not build your sustainable career okay the tools will just be able to kick off your career but when you talk about entering into an environment where a product is being talked about when you talk about product you are talking about an end user when you are talking about end user who drives an engineer an end user drives an engineer okay so why this slide is extremely important you just think about it that you are working on various tools and you really don't know what product expertise you have okay you are working in a typical service industry and you really don't have an idea what type of uh, product is going to be the product where i am most expert in because you are continuously changing the service industry is continuously having different projects and you are right now working on let's say meshing of some plastic parts which are for instrument panel then you are working next day you are working on some seating system uh, meshing parts then you are working on something which is <coughs> which is a washing machine so you are not actually creating an environment around you where you are going to become a subject matter technical it may not happen in the first job it may not happen in a second job but at least you must have an idea that i have to enter into a product company i you cannot keep on working on to a single company which is a uh, kind of a service company where everything is being worked upon all right so it can be 5 years it can be 6 7 years but you must have a product in front of you so that the sustainability of your career is going to be there all right so you'll have the product engineering or you will have an application engineering tools are dominant part of work life you have to ask this question to yourself that am i getting dominated by tool or am i getting dominated by the product or the engineering data or for that matter you are getting dominated by a particular kind of a problem statement a particular okay so if you are working on let's say crash worthiness analysis so that's your problem statement for very long then it doesn't matter where you are whether you are with the service provider or with the oem because your problem statement remains the same you will be able to witness some of the tests even the uh, uh, oem guys don't witness the tests every day that's not what is happening in oems even if you are working in oem you will be still uh, sitting in front of the screen but the access to the data is always going to be there okay so have you understood what is the difference between a product engineer and an application engineer and what is the concept of smt if so just type in c sai simulation engineer can also be a subject matter expert i am doing simulations of seating system for last 20 years that just makes me a subject matter expert in seating system are you getting my point okay type in smt if you have understood this concept smte and write it down what is subject matter technical expertise smte clear okay good wow 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 i am getting answers sai says smt abhishek says shreya all right good good dhairyashil pranav thank you guys vijay thanks a lot thanks a lot ravi jignesh amazing okay clear now uh okay this is very simple for you guys you have already answered so it is a ca driven design and time to market is less etc etc that's the summary you have you know the ca process uh an interesting fact uh ca process consists of pre, uh, the the meshing part or discretization so what is my company named after it is named after elements and nodes that's why name elino okay. so it has no real meaning uh, we are committed to cae for very long now so elements and nodes is nothing but the entire uh, cae process which we are going to follow the start of a cae process okay uh, then you have preprocessor solver process i'm not going to spend more time here because all of you know this this is a very generic uh, thing which is there so preprocessors can be a hypermesh ansa or ls prepost or meshworks or primer or whatever there are available 
resources or generator it can be you have ca which is uh, consisting of solvers okay so solvers can be implicit solvers explicit solvers cfd solvers discrete element methods uh, sph all these things will be there which is going to be under solvers and then you have post processors again it can be d3 plot or it can be hyperview meta post ls pre post all these things are going to be the post processors now working on all these three important aspects is the crucial part of becoming a successful ca analyst working on just one aspect that is either just the pre processing part or just the post process you are building reports a daily you are building 7 8 10 15 reports you are building just the models maybe you are meshing uh, for all the time you are going to do the meshing and you are not doing any kind of a solving it's not going to actually play any important role there so you are not actually in the entire ca process so you will have to actually strive for the entire process where there is a pre processor there is a solver and there is a post processor to give a solution to the end user is that making sense so what is a ca engineer you should stop calling yourself a ca engineer you can write it down in your linkedin profile but stop calling yourself a ca engineer if you are only doing one process out of these three if you are only doing pre processing you are a ca modeler if you are only doing post processing you are still a ca kind of a modeler you are not the uh, on the solver side because you are, you are not building the model i know many guys who are only building reports after reports after reports for the entire activity of their day so what is a ca analyst or a ca engineer the guy who is performing pre processing task trying to define all the boundary conditions etc etc solving the uh, entire process or the simulation post processing it for correctness building a report and talking to the customer it may not happen again it may not happen on year 1 it may not happen on year 2 there are many fortunate guys i was also fortunate back then in 2005 i started as a simple gt uh, graduate engineering training but within 6 months i i was talking to somebody who is sitting in germany or somebody who is sitting in us on the ca process because the mentorship was good because exposure was good all these things okay even in my own organization there are uh, engineers who are talking to customers directly they are doing the entire process pre processing solver or post processing and uh, they are satisfied with the product delivery what they are doing or the project delivery what they are doing because it's the end to end cycle which they are doing okay not just pre processing not just solving not just post processing clear understood okay type in clear if this is clear to you because this is also something where people get confused people think that or engineers think that uh, if i am a ca analyst and i having 3 years of pre processing experience uh, why i am not getting jobs okay why i am not uh, actually uh, getting a salary pay package rise right and that's the answer to this is you must be knowing the entire process okay not just the not just one process clear vijay says clear rajesh says clear all right good nice now let's move on these three slides guys uh, i'll give you a simple hint maybe i'll i'll provide you these three slides rather uh, this is the slide which is important product engineering and application engineering this is the slide which is imp- not this one this is the slide which is important ca process okay and this is another slide which is very very important so wherever you actually see uh the ticks or it is in green color in these departments a ca analyst can work a ca engineer can work what are the three departments sales of course because if somebody knows ca and wants to actually sell the solution you are most welcome sales is always going to be rewarding much rewarding than anything else operations where you are actually going to work on it and r and d it can be 
either developing some some kind of a, a scripts or doing automation but without you knowing why you are automating it's highly unlikely that you will be successful okay so what is the organizational structure it is consisting of front end functions and back end functions there is one more function which is visible to the entire world which is called management okay and it can be strategy management you can call it anything so front end functions are marketing where visibility is very high there is going to be a sales per function which is also having a high visibility for organization and there will be an operation function which is also going to be uh, visible for the organizations not for the engineering organizations but maybe for some retail or some uh, service domain organizations where operations is the key then you have back end functions where hr it may not be visible to the customer finance it may not be visible to the customers and r and d is something which is your own capability of building new kind of a system or a process or a product or some kind of a service uh, pipeline understood so this is an extremely important organizational structural chart where you will have to imagine where you are sitting because when you join as a gt you have your boss or your colleagues that's all your world will be very small in a company as you keep on growing one year two year three year four year down the line you must be having a clear vision where you are in the organization how important you are in the organization what are the cases where there are going to be backlashes in the organization and those you have to avoid there you are going to see this image and ask yourself where i am and how i can actually make use of it or make use of this chart type in org if you are clear with organizational structure i am asking you to type in a lot but there is a reason i want you to get connected with your hand pen and paper and make sure that you are registering it in your head because i am damn sure 90% of you are not going to watch this video again not 90 99% of you even if i share this video nobody is going to watch it again but the odds of you seeing your own notebook are very high am i right you will be seeing your notebook you will be seeing your own notes you will have your diary always in front of you and you will just scroll through the pages and you will remember what happened in the meeting okay okay guys um how many of you learning something type in learning if you are learning something today type in learning if you are learning something okay we are not doing a lot of technical discussions but the rewiring is very important if you don't rewire your own brain and if you don't understand what you are doing you will never understand what is going wrong with your career or what is it that you need to do for the betterment of your career okay so wow that's a good count thanks a lot guys uh, it's it, it's really uh, good to see that you guys are learning something out of a non technical non technical discussion so uh, good thank you for the feedback okay now let's move on uh, let's go to the ls dyna part so we are halfway not even halfway we are more than through because the next are the simulations which will be just in front of you okay but we'll go forward and understand capabilities of ls dyna okay so i'll just start uh, talk you through uh, i'll stop sharing and i will talk you through what is exactly uh, ls dyna doing okay uh, or how it started uh, it's all there in the ls dyna uh, history or if you go on ansys website so the latest update about ls dyna is back in 2020 lstc so livermore software technology corporation got acquired by ansys okay ansys you all know it's a big umbrella now so ls dyna got acquired by ansys but before even ansys started in so to be precise in 1973 uh, ls dyna code the first code of ls dyna was written which was called dyna 3d so the earlier name was dyna 3d it was a university project is in livermore university so livermore is a town in western coast of uh, usa 
and there this university uh, had a professor called dr john halquest and he actually built this code called dyna 3d from 1973 to 1983 it was dyna 3d which was used by public all the public because back then uh, before cold war it was a treaty between nato and uh, lies uh, lies that whatever research happens in usa that research is shareable research to all the friendly nations so from 70 Three to eighty-three, it was working as Dyna three D as an open resource, and which was uh, 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 we, we, which was something about uh, let's say uh, uh, maybe this Abacus guys from France because Abacus was earlier a French organization. Uh, then Radios, which was again. a french organization uh, back then and pam crash which was which was not the french but a mix of european organizations so these three and also the lstc lstc then got formed in 83 and this livermore software technology corporation is uh, 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 is actually a new entity which is having access to dyna 3d okay so dyna 3d was accessed by whom ls dyna radios abacus explicit and pam crash so the essential part or the basic part of explicit dynamic solving is common between all these four solvers it is all working on central difference method they all work on uh, a time integration scheme and they have a similar kind of an algorithm for contacts okay which is an automatic contact kind of a thing clear so this is something about dyna then it, it was a purpose built software or a code for explicit dynamic domain which is time domain so coming to another kind of a learning what is exactly explicit dynamic analysis it is nothing but or explicit solver i would to be precise if i want to call it what is an explicit solver a solver which uses direct solving numerical method to solve a dynamic load problem okay a direct solving numerical method is used like central difference method to solve a dynamic load problem now what is dynamic load dynamic load is nothing but a load which changes its magnitude and or direction with respect to time so you have dynamic load problem which is solved using explicit code or a, uh, which is solved using a uh, direct solving method we will call it as explicit code all right so this is about ls dyna now i'll just take you through with another important case so we are going to finish on time don't leave uh, just make sure that uh, you are paying good attention because there are extremely interesting cases about uh these particular what you say electro not just electromagnetics the multiphysics domain so you have frequency domain you have uh, electromagnetics you have fluid icfd ale cec dual cec so there are uh, new types of solvers getting added there is discrete element method as i earlier mentioned you have blast and impact and sph which is a meshless method you can actually see here and there are cases where xfem is used so xfem is uh, for crack propagation and other bit all these things are possible using single ls dyna code so what is exactly basics of multiphysics simulation simulations so multiphysics simulations involve solving coupled okay so this is very important word guys coupled physics phenomena simultaneously what do you mean by simultaneously i am raising a temperature of some kind of a part or i am putting that part in a furnace and at the same time i am applying some kind of a physical load onto that part what is it a coupled with a simultaneous load okay so there is a thermal load there is a physical load or i can call it as a structural load 
there can be electromagnetics involved which is going to generate a heat there can be electromagnetics which is going to generate some kind of a motion and that motion generates heat all these things combined is going to be called as multiphysics simulation can you take this down because this is not just relevant to ls dyna okay this is relevant to everything okay what is multiphysics simulation so santosh do you have any question uh, you can type in the question i'll just read it through and you can write it down what is exactly multiphysics simulation uh okay santosh i'll just lower your hand aishwarya i'll lower your hand because if there is a real question guys you can raise a hand in between i can stop i can allow microphone and then you can talk if you have a question you can raise hand but what is multiphysics it involves solving coupled physics phenomena simultaneously fine very simple okay why we need multiphysics so we understood what is multiphysics simulation now we will try and understand why we need multiphysics simulations to be performed of course reduced need for physical prototyping uh, we understand that high fidelity modeling which is very very important okay facilitating collaboration so collaboration between cat department ca department and maybe somebody who is an expert in electromagnetics and he wants to actually check what is happening with because of my load safety and early correction of design mistakes that is uh, very important and system level insights okay so these are very basic uh, what i what came to my mind as very basic way uh, why okay why you need a multiphysics simulation so uh, guys the multiphysics simulation and a regular simulation have the answer is same why we need simulation and why we need multiphysics simulation maybe you will think that you are having the same answer you will think that you need a uh, reduced need of physical prototyping but there is a case where em uh, emi emc so that is electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic shielding if it is required the emi emc is completely different kind of a test as compared to the physical loading phenomena so the reduced need of physical prototyping is in that aspect where you are you were earlier getting excuses that there is no cai available there is no methodology numerical methodology available and that's where the uh, multi physics simulation comes into picture okay so let's try and see what multi physics simulations can do uh can you can you uh, have an audio uh, are you able to hear if the video is playing i'll just play it again for vehicle crash safety and product certification there's a reason ansys ls dyna is yeah. the leader in engineering design suites around the world because for vehicle crash safety and product certification there's a reason ansys ls dyna is the leader in engineering design suites around the world because product safety is paramount far and away the leader in simulating crash scenarios for the mobility and transportation industries ansys ls dyna is primarily used for multi physics analysis to perform drop damage catastrophic failure and manufacturing simulations is also used for countless real world multi physics scenarios with large and highly non linear deformations for some of the most complex multi physics engineering challenges with a proven track record of accuracy and helping customers meet regulatory and certification requirements ls dyna is the most scalable multi physics solver famous for its single easy to use unified code But automotive is just the starting line. LS Dyna offers predictive engineering capabilities to an endless list of potential applications: aerospace, defense, manufacturing, electronics, consumer products, civil engineering, and healthcare. 
There's a reason the simulation power of LS Dyna is being deployed for the most safety critical engineering applications on Earth. The fastest, most advanced solver technology for crash and highly nonlinear multi physics simulations. Supported by the most recent advancements in high performance computing, now available in the cloud. LS Dyna, only from ANSYS. Okay, so this is something which is coming from the ANSYS that it, it's fastest and all these things. It's very true. Okay? It's scalable. Everything is true. Now, what is important is it is used for various multi-physics situations. So let's talk about this particular case where you have a, you have a sum where the oil is being stored when the gearbox is, the planetary gearbox is not running. And as soon as it starts running, the oil starts churning out and the lubrication starts and other bit, everything you can actually see. Now, what is multi-physics in this? The SPH elements which you see at the bottom, they are going to be having an equation of state. Okay, they are going to have an equation of state because it's a fluid. So equation of state is extremely necessary there. It can be JWL, it can be whatever it is, uh, the equation of state you are going to use. Whereas the rotation of these gears is highly, uh, let's say, motion driven or it is more of a structural kind of a phenomenon. And you can see the time where these uh, one second, two seconds or 1.39 seconds, whatever it is, it is completing. What you can easily find out here is whether there is a heat getting generated. If there is oil, there is no oil situation. And you can compare how much is the temperature if you define the thermal materials in it. All right. Coming next is an example of mold flow. Okay, it's surprising, but it is a mold flow situation. This is a casting. And in this case, you are actually able to see how the metal is getting filled up and how is the flow of the metal. And then later we are going to understand whether the temperatures are initially at this peak and then they are going down or not. So all these examples, I, I don't own any of this example because I cannot share any of the customer data. This is an example which is fluid structure interaction. Again, a multi-physics case. And you can actually see what is happening with regards to fluid forces on parachute surface and what is the time. So the fluid force remains constant. It will be same because you will have a same kind of a drag. And earlier it was zero and then it actually climbed up and all the forces and other bit you can actually see the drag and everything. So if I just replay this, you will easily understand how it is done. So we are uh, doing it, uh, the FSI problems, we are doing it uh, for many of our customers right now. All right, this is a very interesting case of an electric motor. Okay, and this is where you are applying the magnetic scalar potential or we call it as magnetic field and the motor starts rotating and then we see what are the various uh, areas where I can get some kind of a load thermal load or I can get some kind of a electromagnetic load whether there are uh, any Lorentz forces there all these things I can do while I actually rotate the rotor. Okay, so you can see the stator, rotor, all these things. All right. Then this is if there are two pieces and they are with magnet and you want to snap them, how the magnets will behave. So this is this is how it's going to look like when there are sheets. So you can see a pull force, immediate pull force, and see the force at which it is going to get collapsed. So this is an electromagnetic or a pure magnetic kind of a case. Now this is a battery cooling module or model. We are using this for some of our customers in electric two wheeler cases where battery cooling is required or understanding is required. Also coupling it with drop test okay? because the battery packs are supposed to undergo a good amount of drop testing. You must have seen some, seen, seen some ether ads where they dropped it from a large height and the battery pack remains the same. So that's what uh, we also do. Then you have 
we'll just play yeah so what is this it's a blast but the blast is on a concrete surface and it has fragments so whatever uh, blue particles you see they are the fragments and these fragments are getting penetrated they are creating raksak and they are making sure that the entire uh, concrete slab is getting ruptured okay so this is another example of a multiphysics situation this is discrete element method of course this is from lstc so all these are copyrighted and they are on not copyrighted they are on their respective websites and other bit so you can actually see what is happening here yeah this is discrete element method and we are having water falling down from a tank can you see this and it is filling up this will be like a real water so you need eos you need all these capabilities of uh the discrete element solver and of course this is another multi physics example where you have the structural integrity being tested but at the same time you are checking for what is happening to the dummy or crash test dummy and you are doing a biomedical kind of a uh, study okay of course this is a standard case you must have downloaded these models from nitsa website nhtsa website these are freely available models nobody claims a copyright for them okay so what are the uh, important things which are about ls dyna for multi physics simulation there is no additional license cost for using a multi physics if your existing ls dyna license can make use of the multi physics capabilities and we are able to do the tutorial runs of various cases so there are multiple tutorials which are available for building the model so where you can find the tutorials you can find those tutorials on dynaexamples.com it's a simple website so you don't have to even remember you want dyna examples you type in dynaexamples.com you get all the tutorials another best part is you have ls dyna free of cost available for student use that means non commercial use from ansys website okay it has 128000 node limit but that's all the capabilities are exactly the same you may not be able to run very complex problem or a large problem but you will be able to run the scale down or a coarse version problem of it that's very much sure who should learn ls dyna mechanical engineers of course automotive engineers design engineers that means those who are working in cad or those who are working in the design department those who are right now working in uh ca or fea domain but they are not really up to the mark with solvers they must learn ls dyna okay anyone interested in engineering simulations how you should learn ls dyna you have lno we are there to uh, give you some kind of lessons or uh, a proper guided uh, sessions with regards to ls dyna and there is another option which is self learning okay because you will have some tutorials you will have uh, my tutorials on uh, some or the other websites you will have some tutorials from lno on youtube but they are very basic very low level and they will just give you a confidence that okay i am interested in this kind of a study now this is one of our students feedback okay and i'll come to the question answer sessions um, pradeep okay this is pradeep so everyone type in hi pradeep he is from coast guard so he is doing a great service to our nation so just type in hi pradeep in the chat box and i'll just play the video pradeep will not say a word if you don't say hi pradeep okay thanks a lot so just listen to him what he says it's very important for you guys to understand because he is right now doing phd he did an mtech project at lno he is now uh, taking a small help from us for the for his phd work also clear to navla and clear to pune and i have underwent ls dyna course online course during this lockdown through elino and uh, mr nachiket was our instructor and really i learned a lot from this 
online program of LS Dyna. I really understood the basics on which the LS Dyna is built and and realized the fact that it is not the software which I need to learn. It is the mechanical basics which I need to learn and which should I should have the strong foundation more than the software because software runs based just basically on the physics and the mechanical theorems theories on which are already framed which everyone should realize and I realized it after undergoing this course and I the key takeaway from this is you should have a strong mechanical engineering foundation to understand the software and I really enjoyed the post position post processing sessions and I really enjoyed the model checking sessions and problem solving and online hands on sessions which were conducted during the program but really interesting which I enjoyed the most and which I learned a lot and finally I strongly recommend this course for all the aspirants who are willing to learn LS Dyna you should go this course go through this course through LS through Elino Elino because Mr. Nachiket is a master and you need to learn from the master to become a master. Thank you. Okay, so thanks Pradeep. And these are some of the feedbacks from students abroad. Uh, it is Vaibo, he also uh, enjoyed a lot with regards to hands-on experiences. Key takeaways are learn LS Dyna interface, understood various control cards, database cards, understood various calculations and significance on element sizes on explicit dynamic. And he recommends Eleno because uh, okay, because he is actually more into the major beneficial part of gain basic crash simulation idea and whatnot. Feedback from Rohit is in a similar line where theoretical sessions in a very detailed extensive manner. We have extensively covered the entire theory part of uh, LSD in a case continuous support from our end uh, special emphasis on understanding product and corresponding regulations rather than just focusing on tools so that's a very important case i'm uh, telling every single guy that don't focus on tool operation focus on what is exactly the physics behind it basics of engineering course is free of cost for everyone right now also i'm never going to charge in a single penny about uh, for the basics of engineering course it's there on our website I recommend this course to students who wish to build a career in CAE, especially in crash domain. And we do have our website where you can always uh, see the feedbacks okay, of the real time students. So I'll just uh, paste my website address here and you can uh, in the chat box it is pasted. So you can go and check our website whenever necessary. Now coming to what we are offering and then we will move to the question answer. So we are well in time. So we'll move to the question answer session. So we have four memberships. Okay. First is silver membership where basics of engineering, hypermesh and weekly session will be converted with regards to uh, the question answers. Okay. And uh, there will be uh, sessions about tool tests and other bit, but I haven't listed it. It's, it's a damn important part of it. We have a gold membership, which is for the students who already know the pre-processing. So those who are working in Hypermesh or in ANSA or in any other pre-processor for a, uh, let's say one or two or three, four years, you must be able to get hands-on with this gold membership where basics of engineering, LS Dyna, QA session and placement, ass placement assistance will be provided to you. Along with this, there will be seating system uh, product training session, which will be there same as that of a Gold Plus Plus member. There will be a mock interview session, which will be there. So the placement assistance covers the mock interviews. My friends in CAE take interviews of yours. I don't take mock interviews and you will get a real time feedback from the industry. Then we are adding Python scripting from next month onwards for all Gold, Gold Plus Plus and Diamond members. We have this basics of engineering, hypermesh, LS Dyna, LS Prepost, Hyperview, sitting system product training, Fusion 360, and access to all question answers. It is not limited to six months. I have uh, get out of that limit. 
you can ask any time because there are there are cases where people enroll for the course they start the course and then they have a workload and they are not able to continue then they continue it after 2 3 4 months so i don't want your learning to stop so you can ask me question any time we have a dedicated whatsapp group for that then we have a diamond membership where everything is getting covered along with the seating system and full vehicle crash worthiness so both are included in diamond membership so the entire seating system spectrum and entire crash worthiness spectrum okay so full vehicle crash worthiness so it can be because we have a commercial ls dyna license at lno we don't have node limit so your runs can be possibly run at our end uh, but we try and make it as compact as possible so that you are able to run it at your own computer so the access remains good and you can easily debug the calculation okay so this is just the content you can find this content on our website also these are the membership module matrices fees it's in both us dollar as well as in indian rupees and the silver membership is 15999 gold is 48999 uh, gold plus plus is combination of these two which is 64998 and diamond is 124999 so these are the membership module matrix now this is what an interesting page is you can have a screenshot of this page uh, offers valid till 21st of may only that is you have time to think for two or three days flat 10% discount on all courses if you make payment before 19th of may and additional 10% discount will also be applicable so the courses price reduces to reduces by 20% if you enroll before end of day tomorrow that is maybe 10 o'clock 10 pm so you have full 24 hours to think about if you say that okay i i missed uh, uh i missed the bus what shall i do you still have two more days but your discount will be reduced to 5% that means instead of 20% discount you will be getting 15% discount okay and after that there is no discount at all so the entire course uh, fees will be freezed and then you will have no access so if you want to really talk to me if you want to really uh, have a discussion with me we can have a discussion on whatsapp we can have a discussion on email we can have a discussion one to one discussion will be little difficult because tomorrow i am uh, not in pune so tomorrow i will be traveling so one to one discussion becomes difficult but on phone i will be able to reach so whatsapp is something which is which will remain with me i can answer whenever i get a time and this is very very lucrative offer because i have never given some kind of this kind of an offer and what is important here guys important thing is even if you don't want an additional 10% discount by paying full payment you get the 10% discount by paying 50% payment now that is before 19th do the next 25 pay percent payment after 30 days and do another 25 percent payment after 60 days so you are essentially saving on emis also and you are not actually getting the cost of that of a full membership so you are getting cost which is much reduced and you have another chance of thinking about uh, this courses before 21st of may which is tuesday so this is not tuesday i'm sorry this is going to be sunday Okay, so this page i will send it to you on your emails and the additional 10% discount is for gold gold plus plus and diamond membership if you make a full payment before 21st of may 2024 so if you think that you are not able to do the full payment okay then you must enroll for the full discount that is 10 plus 10% maybe so this entire 10 per why uh, why i am telling you additional 10% because you are saving on the emi costs they will be around 16 17% on credit cards so those who want to purchase through credit cards we have that option as well but if you want to just do the bank transactions you have this option okay so if you are going to make additional or if you want to make additional 10% discount 
then this discount plus this additional 10% discount is applicable for those who are going to make single payment for either gold, gold plus plus or diamond membership. Is this making sense? So if you are going to make the full discount or if you want to take the advantage of full discount, 10% plus additional 10%, you can do a full payment for these three options and avail a full 20% discount before 21st. Making sense? Clear? Thanks a lot, guys. And that's all which I wanted to share. So we are open for uh, Q&A. And any questions you have, so what I will do, I'll just stop sharing or maybe I, uh, yeah, I'll stop sharing and what I will do, I will allow anyone to talk to me, just raise your hand and we will, uh, I'll just unmute you and then we can talk. Mayur, I was a student at LNO where I learned LS Dana. It was great learning experience and worked in a structural field for three years. Now I'm doing uh, my internship in EMC simulation. Uh, is there any way to club these two domain? No, you can club actually. EMC is electromagnetics or what, Mayur? Thanks a lot for kind words, first of all. I'm seeing you after a long time, Mayur. Uh, EMC is what? EMC is, uh, I can unmute you if required. So you can just uh, raise your hand and I can unmute you. Yeah, so electromagnetics and the uh, physics, that is structural domain, we are also right now working. So you can combine these uh, perfectly okay. Okay, so I think, uh, Mayur, okay, I'll just try to unmute you one second. So can I... Uh, can I do these things? I think I can unmute everyone or meeting options. Just one minute, guys. We'll see if I can unmute all of you. Ah, yeah, there you go. Hello, Mike, for attendees. And I have made that change. So uh, anyone can unmute and talk. Just try for it if it is working and one by one uh, we can discuss. So Mayur, try unmuting yourself. Okay, I think uh, we don't have Mayur with us or maybe he's not able to hear me. Uh, just a minute. Okay, uh, yes, Varun is asking, uh, you showed example of battery simulation. Do we, uh, we can also do it in ANSYS Fluent? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Don't get confused. Fluent is a pure CFD solver where, uh, yeah, as uh, Sachit says, it's uh, not really possible. What we saw was actually the structural element of those cells taken into account. And that is something which is, uh, which is also being considered with a thermal load and the chemical load. So there is a chemistry which is possible using LS Dyna. So that is all combined. You can actually see these Dyna examples on dynaexamples.com, it's possible. Hello. Yes, Mayur. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, yes, hello. Long time we met. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice to hear you. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now I am doing my master's in Germany, okay. and uh, like in the electromobility uh, field. So Correct. due to my previous experience, now I got this opportunity to work in the EMC domain. So Perfect. it's just uh, a beginning now. It's just mm -hmm. uh, one month will be complete in uh, the end of this May. So now I don't have much idea about EMC actually. I just have a little bit and uh, I want to explore that field also. Okay. So I was confused whether it is like uh, we can club these two domain or I only have to work in EMC because in EMC uh, the basics I have to prepare like from the scratch because it involves some uh, like electromagnetism and those kind of things. Yes, 
and yes. actually i have some knowledge about structural but that field is totally different so i wanted that to do correct. something yeah so if i could do a clubbing of these two fields then it would be better and it is it is quite possible and we are uh, having that kind of a uh, knowledge transfer right now going on uh, with regards to electromagnetics we are actively working on electromagnetics and we are doing that kind of a specific course on electromagnetics maybe we can have a brush up session for the regular ls dyna and then uh, only do the electromagnetics uh, small module so that you will understand how it works so as i as i showed you a uh, battery is one part motor is another part and then there are some cases where electromagnetic interferences that means if there is some kind of an electromagnetic device it may interfere in communication it may interfere in uh, some kind of a signal transfer all these things are possible using ls dyna okay yeah okay yeah sir thank you sure. that's what okay. i want to sure you can connect okay. with me you have my number uh, we are on group so you can connect with me and we can talk not an issue yes yes sir yeah. thank so, you yeah okay most welcome vinay uh, is asking with radios is it possible to do multi physics to a very small extent because i, I i'll tell you a fr my frank opinion radios stopped uh, developing themselves way back maybe 7 8 years ago and now radios is open source so if you have capability you have the source code and you want to do some kind of a play around you can do that but uh, inherently it is not having that kind of a capability okay uh, gouda is asking what shall be the loading rate to get the material stress strain curve to feed for material 20 mat 24 it's for crash analysis now uh, the loading rate is dependent on how fast you are making a crash so for 64 km per hour 1 by 1000 is the strain rate which we which we must have so it can be 1 by 1000 1 by 100 1 by 10 and 1 so these many four or five uh, strain rates you must have to define it in defined table that is sufficient for 64 km per hour crash but when we use it for defense when we have bullet penetration or uh, missile uh, kind of a penetration in, uh, situation we have even 1 by 10000 or 1 by 1 into 10 to the power 6 kind of a 1 uh, by 1 into 10 to the power 6 kind of a strain rate it's very difficult to get you need the shpb split of kinson pressure bar and all other bit yeah train crash 1 by 100 is more than sufficient 25 kmph so 1 by 100 is okay 1 by 100 1 by 10 is also okay okay that depends on what type of material so if it is steel i think 1 by 10 1 by 100 is okay good nice any other questions guys sachit vinay dharyashil natrajan rajas shreyas abhishek hi sir hello who is this bharat 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 sir. bharat yeah bharat tell me uh, actually uh, uh, my doubt is in general so someone is say, so like i am doing some uh, ca analyst i was working as a ca analyst so i am right. doing meshing uh, basically pre processing solving and post processing all the things uh, all the jobs i am doing mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, in future i want to ask uh, if someone is not comfortable with meshing because i know know how of meshing right now if someone is uh, down the line 5 years down the line if someone is not comfortable in meshing and he want to be still want to be in organization so is that a sustainable career option like no. if you want to do only uh, solver and post processing no 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 you as i said as i mentioned earlier that ca is not just meshing or not just solving or not just post processing ca is everything so ca is what ca is solver or pre processor solver post processor so for sustainable career you must have all uh, knowledge of all three in detail okay nay no, i i mean to say the knowledge is there but i want to uh, day to day task uh, because no, you, that's you what, might be so uh, you will you will actually forget uh, even mm. if you have knowledge right now if you don't apply it you are going to forget it 
yeah abhishek is so, asking like like yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, like in some organization uh, i heard that there are separate departments like uh, meshing has done by some different yes uh, person and, and yes. analysis and post processing is done by different person so in that case it is possible uh see you have to have some kind of an external like lno you can learn from us about this uh, explicit dynamic analysis that is solver part those guys are going to search for jobs or we assist them to search jobs which are involving the simulation side or simulation field so that is the placement assistance which we are providing in the organization where there is only meshing going on you really cannot do much if they don't have a project for analysis you are uh, bound you are not able to do anything getting my point yeah, yeah okay okay abhishek says i am also interested in crash and uh, automotive emi testing what is emi yeah, that is electromagnetics you mean to say uh, abhishek you can unmute and talk not an issue okay so yeah that is it is possible so you you should be learning uh, do you know preprocessor abhishek any preprocessor or any ca knowledge you have or uh, it's not i i cannot hear you i think you are on no, you are not on mute but your mic is disabled that means on on your hardware side i are don't see you hear me now yeah yeah i can i can hear you hi yes. hi so yeah Hello, with, um, hi um so initially you know when i started my career i went through cad and ca um uh certification program and i i uh, and then during my masters as well i went through ls tina so oh, i do cool. have a pre pretty basic knowledge about the cae domain at the moment mm -hmm. i'm 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 into an ev commercial vehicle so uh, we are actually you know uh, physically testing our uh, product for emi but as uh, one of your uh, you know um, student or previous student he asked for the emi so i'm also interested if it's possible to you know integrate crash and emi testing mm -hmm. as a learning program yes so that is quite possible we will go kind of a customization route there in the sense uh, you will have a specific need you right now have a specific need and we will talk about it because i need to also understand in detail whether you are capable of handling the crash worthiness part of it or not because you said that you have already worked on ls dyna so there is no need of reinvesting in the same kind of a learning but if you feel that okay i need even the expert guidance and a combination of it uh, we can start it like a, a combination program where the physical impact or physical in the sense the impact on a structural side as well as and the effect of that impact on an emi side that is electromagnetic side is being taken into account so it can be battery it can be motor all these things we can take into account for sure so it's possible so we can connect over email i think you must have received my emails which i sent oh, you which is so yeah so you can reply over email what is it that you need and i will uh, try and immediately give you a reply so that you don't miss the deadline of this uh, 20% discount sure i will i will keep you posted thank you okay thanks abhishek thanks okay who is raising hand i'm not able to see rahul yeah rahul go ahead yeah hi good evening sir yes very good evening Tell me. Yeah, last week itself, sir, I joined. Uh, I think I yes. think this time my membership. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So yeah. I just started. I just started with LS China theory sessions, and I would like to see that yeah. your sessions are really important. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So as you say, like daily, uh, at least uh, take out some half an hour to attend that session. So I'm daily attending. <laughs> yeah so if you if you just do weekend to weekend you will never finish it and even if you just do 30 minutes per day i think you are making a great progress for working professionals finding out 30 minutes per day is also a challenge i know yes sir. 
but uh, it's good to know that you are doing it in a consistent way um, all the best rahul yeah thank you sir and sir yeah. this full vehicle module will also be added yes yes for for the existing uh, diamond members it's no question we will be adding it for sure okay yeah. uh, will it take some time or it will no no it will not be added without you finishing some modules because i really don't want you to get just drifted away from the basic ls dyna core part because it's a multi physics com combination of various physics so if you just skip one type of a physics part and just okay. jump on to a beautiful lady that's not going to happen <laughs> okay and so we'll go separate don't worry you will be having that access to all the courses no issues Yeah, I'm I'm following as per your plan, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be as per the plan, and I uh, I I really wanted to uh, make it a success rather than just giving you a course or a module. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Good. Thanks, Rahul. Yeah. All right. Any questions, guys? Any further questions? Anything you wish to add? Anything you wish to ask? Or uh. any uh, specific uh, query you have or information you want not we can just call it a day it was an amazing session i made a great offer right now uh, i really want everyone those who are interested to take a full advantage and make sure that you are actually uh, joining these kind of multi physics domain classes and that way you will have a better edge over the market because there are very few people who really know the multi physics part of it that's a fact so if you go on uh, go inside uh, let's say linkedin or any kind of a profile search engine you will see there are hardly few people who know the multi physics to the detail and they are able to teach so i really appreciate you guys coming in thank you very much thanks to all those who uh, left earlier also but uh, it it was an amazing evening thanks for showing up in large number and there are there were around 150 registrations and 46 47 showed up so it's a usual ratio of 30% drop uh, and uh, i'm pretty happy with it okay thank you guys thanks a lot have a great night and any question you have uh, you can simply put in uh, over the email you already have my email i will put this recording for those who missed out i will put this recording with the uh, 20% uh, discount mark there and uh, you guys please take full advantage thanks gouda thanks a lot thanks for joining thanks bharat thanks manish thanks anga thanks aishwarya abhishek natrajan sachin sai vinay varun thank you very much take care mohan thanks a lot bye